giving you the real from A to Z surrounding the Dallas Cowboys. News, updates, rumors, transactions, takes, and more. So strap up, Cowboys Nation, and start your day off with A to Z Sports. Live with Will Steele. Three, two, one. Here we go. Good morning, good people. Welcome to A to Z Sports Live. We're streaming live on YouTube. And of course, I am your host, Will Skywalker Steel. Boom! What's happening? How y'all doing on this beautiful Thursday? Coming up. We got the Mike Zimmer press conference. He's been reintroduced to Cowboys Nation, reintroduced to Cowboys media, and we're going to break it down a little bit here. We're going to wean out the fluff of Mike McCarthy and just take a listen to one Mike Zimmer. And in the middle of that, uh, we'll likely show some more Mike Zimmer film to get an idea of who and what he is as a defensive mind, so make sure you guys stick around for that. Uh, it's going to be one of these days, y'all. I'm just keeping it to being. It is our very first roll out the TV day. If you're new here, uh, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I bet you that image it, it, it brings back memories. It's it's, it's kind of a uh, nostalgic take, right? Where you know it's a Friday or something. Maybe you got a substitute teacher. And she doesn't know the curriculum or what have you. And she's just like, hey, man, go pop in uh, October Sky or something. You know? Ro- go go grab the TV. I'll go push the TV in there and pop it in. And, and it's basically a chill day. You're not really doing a whole lot of work. Half the damn time we sleeping. So it's going to be, don't sleep, though. I'm not telling you how to go to sleep. It's going to be a similar day where we're going to roll out the TV. We're going to listen to, to Mike Zimmer. We're going to react to some of the things he's been saying in the middle of that. A little bit of work, not a lot of work. We're going to hit the film room. I think that's actually the fun part. We're going to hit the film room and take a look at some plays, some defensive schemes and and things that he likes to do to kind of uh, get a better idea of of who, like I said, what Mike Zimmer is as a defensive mind. So, you know, and then look, if you guys want to call in, I'm not putting any pressure on you today. Easy day. Shouldn't be a a terribly long show, but you can. 351-999-3787 to give me your opinions on, on the Mike Zimmer press conference. All right. Roll out the TV type day, y'all. Shouldn't be shouldn't be nothing crazy, but appreciate y'all for being here this morning. Bomb Bomb squad. squad. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna hit this roundup though, real quick. Easy, simple little roundup. We got some more coaching news. It's like every day, there's more and more coaching news that is dropping around the league. And this time, maybe this this could be a situation where it could help the Cowboys. At least if I was the Cowboys, I would 100 percent look at it that way. So. Uh, let's hit this roundup, y'all, and get into the goods. It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time! It is time for... It's time for the morning roundup. Round them up, boys. Let me talk to you. So, a lot of people were caught by surprise with this one the Niners have fired defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes or should I say (laughs) after the Super Bowl ended and I think what caught a lot of people by surprise was that the the Niners defense was fantastic in the Super Bowl in fact they're, they're the reason why they had a shot to win this game right and the Niners defense, for the most part, was pretty damn good during the season. Top four in DVOA, top five uh, points per game, I believe it was, and yards and all that good stuff. It was a Niners defense. However, those close to the situation down there in San Fran, whether it be as a diehard fan or just people who are in the media, they you could kind of sense this could have been coming. There, there seem to be odds or philosophical differences 
between Kyle Shanahan and Steve Wilkes. Look, I don't know what those differences were. I know he was not the same schematic style of defensive coordinator as Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryans, but he put up similar, if not better in some cases, numbers defensively. So the Niners continued to carry on their, what seems to be like the last 10 to 15 years, they just had a really good defense with Steve Wilkes. And he's a respected mind. So I'm not sure what it was. We do know that Shanahan is a very stubborn coach and a very arrogant and confident coach. I get why. You've had a ton of success uh, in San Francisco. But I think the the important factor here is not he's not fired because of the Super Bowl. Because the Super Bowl, really, you look at him and say, fantastic job. Yes, the last drive sucked. They converted third and short and fourth and short. And they scored a game winner. You, you didn't play as aggressive. But you gave up one touchdown prior to that. And the one touchdown was from a muff punt. Not even a muff punt. The punt hit somebody's foot. It wasn't even your fault. So it's not, it has nothing to do with the Super Bowl. It has everything to do with prior to that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they asked him to come down. I think he was in a booth at one point. They asked him to come down. So there were just philosophical differences. Y- y- y'all know what that means. Between Steve Wilkes and Kyle Shanahan. Immediately on Twitter, I was like, hey, I would 100% pick up that phone and call Steve Wilkes if I'm Mike Zimmer. But what could he do, Sky? Well, you just lost Joe Witt Jr. Joe Witt Jr. was your pass game coordinator and defensive backs coach. And for some odd reason, you know what? I got to stop thinking that because Twitter is weird. It's a strange place, man. I, I, I put out the idea of, hey, man, you could bring in Steve Wilkes to kind of take over that role or or, or uh, some form of capacity of Joe Witt Jr. as a defensive backs coach. And everybody's like, oh, my God, well, what about Al Harris? What are you talking about? What about Al Harris? Guy, you can't do that. Guys, I think we're forgetting Al Harris and Joe Witt Jr. worked together for three seasons under the same capacity. You don't have, you don't have to have one defensive backs coach. Dallas had two of them. One was a pass game coordinator, secondary coach. The other one was a defensive backs coach that primarily worked with the the, uh, cornerbacks. The same thing can happen. I don't care if you want to say, okay, well, Al Harris is the the, the pass game coordinator. However, I think you should do your homework on that. Make sure Al is ready to deal with pass game um, game plans. Wilkes has done this before. Wilkes has been a pass game coordinator. He's worked with defensive back coaches forever. He's a former defensive coordinator. Oh, by the way, he just was a defensive coordinator in San Fran. So if you want a guy that knows the ins and outs of what they do over there, not not saying that, you know, his information is going to automatically mean you're going to have success against them. But I mean, does have firsthand knowledge. So I just think it's a it's a win win all the way around. Bring him in here, uh, whether you want to call him a senior assistant defensive person personnel I, I personally would bring him in there to help with the dbs he he's worked with dbs his entire career um mike zimmer is also a former db guy but he likes to coach every position and i think he can he can continue to help out a guy like al harris who i'm not saying al needs any help but from a coaching standpoint he's still working his way up the ladder where uh steve wilkes has been a defensive coordinator in multiple spots head coach in multiple spots, whether it be interim or not, whether it be one year or not, it doesn't matter. He he knows the ins and outs of the NFL from all levels of the coaching standpoint. And I think he would be a fantastic late season, late off season addition for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, we will keep our ears and eyes plugged on that. Today, we were scheduled to have Pat, but what we're going to do is we're going to bring Pat on tomorrow on Friday's show, which will be remote at Hattie B's, by the way. But we'll bring Pat on because we're kind of want to give it some time to breathe here. We want to see if Mike Zimmer, you know, whether it be him hiring guys today or reaching out and we get some news to talk about what those guys could bring to the table here in Dallas. But we know now, obviously, with Mike being hired, the Cowboys are going to have to fill a couple roles. There, there is no longer a defensive line coach. There is no longer a defensive line assistant. Uh, secondaries coach, if they wanted to bring somebody else in, there's that. And y'all know the, 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 the position I'm worried about most. 
I need me a new linebacker's coach. Flat out. I don't see how he can retain Scott McCurley. I don't. You know, Scott came up in Green Bay under Mike and under a bunch of three, four guys. He, he coaches he coaches these guys up differently. Now, the thing with, with good coaches, they're able to adapt to what their coordinator wants, right? But uh, I, I just say go get your guy, Paul Gunther. I am standing on the table for Mike Zimmer to go get his guy, Paul Gunther, to come in here and coach the what I would imagine to be new linebackers that will be here. Um, so if I had to guess, I think Mike Zimmer's staff will likely be rounded out by mid next week at the latest, late next week at the latest, I should say, by mid next week, because you can't you can't wait long. When, when watching this presser, one of the things that nothing ticked me off per se in regards to the presser, but one of the things that made me say, see, man, that's exactly why we need to get this done early was when Mike. They kept saying, hey, man, we're late in the process, so I, we got to go sit down with the coaches. We got to interview the coaches. We got to finish watching tape. By the time all this is, you know, com- completely figured out, you got the staff, we watched the tape, we got to, we got to, we, we figured out who we like to keep around. We're going to be in March. Now Zim's got, hey, this is who I wanted for agency. This is the guys we want to look at in the draft. So just, it is frustrating that it took so long, but it's done. It's here. Now we can move forward and hopefully get the guys in here in place to make Mike Zimmer's defense work because everywhere he's been, it has worked. Just let him do his thing. Just let him do his thing. And part of doing his thing may be hiring Mike Wil- uh, Steve Wilkes. Maybe that was the guy that was calling. So, you know, we'll see. Um, and if y'all know what I'm talking about in regards to the call, we'll, we'll get to that here in the press conference. So. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to go ahead and roll that TV out now and take a listen to Mike Zimmer's presser. So here's here's how we're going to do it, though. I pretty much weeded out all the Mike McCarthy stuff. By the way, why was he there? Maybe I'll talk to you about that another day or later on today, but <sighs> weird, man. That, that was just a weird vibe to me, but it is what it is. Let's take a listen to this uh, press conference. I weeded out all the Mike McCarthy stuff, so this is not a 35-minute presser that we're listening to. It's literally less than half of that, about 13, 14 minutes. In between, we'll talk to y'all. In between, we'll take a look at some film, um, and that and that's how we'll do it. So let's turn the page here. Turn that off. Turn me up. Let go. Never, never thought of retirement or anything like that after Minnesota. No, not really. Um, sometimes it's forced retirement, you know, but uh, it's more about um, getting the right situation for you. Like I said before, um, I had opportunities, other opportunities that I that I could have taken, and uh, but I wasn't going to go somewhere that I didn't I didn't feel comfortable with with the the organization and and uh, the people there. So. So right off the bat, it's, it's good to know that, you know, Zim, and we don't know how true this is here, but but I, but the way I took away from this is that Zim really wanted to coach, and he could have coached, but he wanted to wait for the right opportunity. And look, Dallas Cowboys defense with these players, I, I could only imagine how many defensive coaches would have wanted at least a chance to coach these guys. Just so happens to be that Zim is familiar with this organization. Zim is familiar with the Joneses, and Zim knows defense. Mike Todd Archer of ESPN. What do you think of the pieces that you have available to you here on this defense, and how can you make this defense better than what it's been? Yeah, well, it's a, hopefully I can. Um, you know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I mean, they've been pretty good. Uh, you know, I know there's been some situations where um, <clears throat> things haven't happened, it, but that happens in coaching. You know, it all happens a lot. So um, we're going to look at the, the players, try and figure out the best way to use them, um, put the scheme together, um, and again, you know, we, we want to take the good things that they've done and maybe add a few more other things that we've done good in the past and try to try to make this thing manageable where, you know, we're disciplined and we're, um, you know, well coached, we're um, play together as a team. Um, you know, Come we try on, to we try to make sure everybody understands their role so that other people on the on the field can have success doing their job. I got to run that back, coach. He was spitting on that one. Together as a team, um, you know, we try to we try to.
manageable where you know we're disciplined and we're Check. um you know well coached Check. we're um play together as a team Check. um you know we try to we try to make sure everybody understands their role so that other people on the on the field can have success doing their job John Michelle with the athletic uh, specifically though with hold Michael on, Parsons John. what have you th- hold on John before we get to Michael Parsons and all that stuff man I I, I got to Discipline, playing together. Everybody knows their roles. So other play- These are the type of things that I, I wanted to hear. I know you can say, oh, well, Sky, it's just talk, it's just talk. You can say that it's just talk. But when you actually go and watch Zimmer's defenses, they play that way. I often talk about how jealous I am of defenses playing on a string. And I want to bring up some defensive plays here for the Minnesota Vikings under Mike Zimmer. If you guys have ever watched our tape Tuesdays or just just when we're breaking down, not even tape Tuesdays, when we're breaking down the opponents, um, I often say whether it be zone or whether it be run defense, these guys are just playing on a string. It doesn't look like I'm relying on the uber talents of one player or two players or we're doing all these crazy stunts and loops. They're playing on a string. And this is the defensive run game right here. Okay. That, that can pertain to, to run defense too, y'all. Not just pass defense with, with zone coverage. And I put together a few plays that I found here of them doing exactly that. And you see it. You, you see these guys, and I'm sorry for the blurriness. Y'all just going to have to deal with me here. with the, Playing their, their gaps correctly. Gap integrity. Being sound so guys can make plays behind them. Specifically on this play here. You know, you got number 50 making sure he's got outside. He's not even worried about trying to get up. He's just trying to make sure he's doing his job to funnel it back in. I'm taking on this double team, right? He's keeping his eye on his two. He's trying to get a loop. Didn't get it, but that's fine. 45 can now shoot here, or Kendrick can shoot here. These guys doing their job makes this running back have to cut back right into the guys to finish and fill the play. And this is a defense playing on a string to me. I don't necessarily know, same thing here, that the Cowboys did that often. Speaking of the Cowboys, same exact situation. Get your cross face your guy here. Uh, Instead of 50 falling back, you're going to see him. No, I'm going to meet. I think that's Joe Looney, by the way. Let's cross face the center here. We want to get uh, Michael, or not Michael Kendricks, Eric Kendricks flying downhill. And watch what he does to I think this was one of our guys we had back in the day was it was it uh one of the Irvins this is why this is exactly why I want me a middle linebacker (laughs) that can do something like this but they're playing on a string is the point of this whole same thing here once again just watch this is run defense I'm just strictly showing run defense of how these guys are playing together on a string doing their job so other players can do their jobs and be sound and I believe Mike Zimmer had something along the lines of five top five, not 10, five top five run defenses in yards per carry. I usually look at yards per carry um, because of that's really the true testament. If you look at yards per game, that can be a, you know, you can hide behind you being a fantastic offense. You can hide behind you being a high profile or a high fly offense and the defense is now i'm sorry the opposing offense is now like hey we can't run dallas has done that for what 15 20 years so i, I love to hear that from zim let me hit the oh that's mar we we'll got to get to you later mar we, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna get to you now let's get back to zim john john michelle with the athletic uh specifically though with michael parsons what have you thought of him as a player and does he kind of remind you of any other players you've worked with? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously he's a terrific player. You know, you watch him on, on tape and he makes uh, some unbelievably athletic plays. Uh, you know, at this point in stage right now, I'm trying to figure out, get the coaches in here, and then we can sit down. And one, of, I think one of the strengths that I've always had is to look at players and, and kind of have a vision for each player and then try to figure out how we can use them in the best way. Um, one of the things I would hate to do right now is to tell you how I'm thinking about playing him without talking to him and letting, letting him think, okay, this is what we're thinking about doing with you, Micah. Um, I don't think I should tell you guys first before I tell him. <laughs> Hey, I love this about Zim. 
Zim said, first of all, y'all y'all can miss me with trying to get me to give y'all my game plan away in, in February. I got to sit down with the player, and I'm going to tell him exactly how we're going to use him. What I look like telling you before I talk to him. See, I, I, this, I like this. I don't know this may be nothing. But I like this. And he he alluded to something else later in his press conference that I didn't put in the in the clips here because it, it didn't matter really. But um he says something along the lines of, Hey, I'm just glad I'm not gonna have to be up here after every game, every single day, every practice giving these damn press conference speeches. I can just focus on defense. I love it. In this pressure, you can feel that energy, right? And and something something about these former defensive coordinators where they flame out as head coaches, which I don't think Mike did a bad job in Minnesota at all. When you really go look at it, it and he even says something along the lines of, hey, man, I ain't never have a number one offense. So uh, keep that up, Big Mike. But when you go look at his his tenure in Minnesota, he had a really good tenure, I think. But, but these DCs, they t- tend to flame out as head coaches in the league but when they go back to being defensive coordinators i mean it's it's almost like clockwork these dudes just just continue to be good todd bowles was that way dan quinn was that way leslie frazier right a lot of these guys you know dom capers dick i don't know if dick lebeau was i know dom was but but a lot of these guys go on to be head coaches flame out go back to being dcs and and they usually are good because now they're focused they don't got to worry about the pressure they don't got to worry about Hey man, everybody getting on the plane and we got to look at our schedule and boo. boo. No, it's this is what my job is to do. And I think if you put Zimmer in the room and say, just fix the defense or improve the defense or make them more fundamentally sound and disciplined and all this stuff, I think he's going to do it. What, what will that result in? We don't know. That could determine on the other side of the ball. But I feel like he's going to be good for this team. Let's get back to you, Zim. If that's Calvin. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Point News. Coach McCarthy was away. He went in the lab and looked at a lot of different things. Did you do anything similar to what he did when he was away? Oh, I did. I did some some of that. Um, you know, a lot of it. I I did a lot of reflection on. Um, what my time in Minnesota, you know, the eight years, the things that I felt like we did good, the things um, that I felt like I didn't do as good, trying to figure out, you know, how I can be a better coach in the future. Um, obviously, there was all, always some tape watching and, and uh, things like that. Marvin and I, Marvin Lewis and I was a great friend. Um, you know, we did a podcast, and then afterwards we'd sit on there and um, we'd watch tape together and talk about players and talk about schemes and things like that. But a lot of it was a lot of it was reflection on um, you know what I did well and what I didn't do well. AKA, so Zim, was you in the goddamn barn or not? Was you in that barn watching this analytics and the PFFs and all this other stuff? That's basically what Kyle Watkins was trying to say right there. And uh, I thought it was pretty cool that Zim said, "Hey man, me and uh, me and Marv, we had a podcast, man. We was we was we was talking, you know, ball." He was out there looking at film and, and trying to keep up with these things. There's going to be a point in this press conference where they ask him about the new age offenses and whatnot, which, again, y'all, it's not like Zim has been out the game for 10 years. It's been two seasons, so he's very accustomed to some of these things. But there has been um, some new wrinkles, push motion he brings up as well. So uh, don't get it twisted. He, he addresses it, and that was something I was very interested to hear uh, what he had to say. Let's get one more. Uh, question in before we get to the uh, phones. Saad. Saad, he's the athletic. Uh, Mike, when you, when you kind of look at the way the – I know you haven't been out that long, but uh, when you look at just the way offenses evolve constantly in the NFL, whether it's, you know, the, it the McVeighs and Shanahan's and all that stuff, where have you kind of seen the NFL offenses go and how do you kind of see your defense fitting – yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of different kind of scheme scheme things. That, you know, the, um, you're, you're starting to see a lot more of the receiver outside motion and with speed going up the field. You're, you know, you're seeing, obviously, in the last few years, there's been a lot of the jet sweeps and rocket motions and things like that. So I think that's been a lot of it. Um, you know, we've, we've all talked about the different uh, ways to handle it. And, you know, football is an evolving game, whether it's offense or defense. And so it, it all kind of comes back. You know, the defense catches up, then the offense catches up, and it just kind of goes from there. So um, 
without being too specific, I know I'm not, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll have ways to combat these things. I love it. It's very interesting that he said, without being very, without being specific, we'll have ways to combat these things. But the, before that, he talked about how the offense catches up, defense catches up, et cetera, et cetera. Right now, believe it or not, the way the the NFL is 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 shaping into is coming back to the way Mike Zimmer plays defense, and it's going away from the way that Dan Quinn was playing defense. See, Dan tried to get ahead of the curve, thought he was getting ahead of the curve, but the, hey, let's go light on the second level, tons of of, of DBs because we're throwing, we're throwing, we're throwing, and then the rest of the league said, well, we'll just put two safeties back. Here. We'll make you matriculate back down the field. And team said, okay, so now instead of airing this thing out, Air Coriel style vertical offense, it's a horizontally horizontal game now because we're putting those two safeties back there. Um, and 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 what Zim can do is he can not only put the two safeties back there, but he can disguise it as well. So I'm gonna pull up a few of these plays to illustrate that a little bit here. Let's go back to the film room, not you, Zim. Bada bing, bada boom. Here we go. So, and, and again, it's not like he's been away from the game that much. This is, and again, sorry for the blurriness, but you guys will get the picture. This is a very classic Mike Zimmer look. We will see probably a lot here in Dallas. A double A gap mug look. Both the linebackers walking up to the line. But here's the difference for, for the offense. The offense is going to motion their guy into a stack formation so that they can't deal with with the uh, press. But right at the last second, if you see right there, bottom of your screen, what looks like a cover one, what looks like a single high, the safety is going to rotate from the half of the line of scrimmage, and he's going to play his deep half, and the other one's going to play his deep half. So now we're in a cover two type look. Holds the ball. By the time a guy gets open, it's too late. Sack. Done. Another similar look. By the way, communication is key here. If you look at the top of the screen. Big communication is huge for Mike Zimmer's defense. Similar look, double A gap. Hey, is this uh, safety going to blitz off the edge? Because we know Mike Zimmer can do it. Let's get the quarterback at the line of scrimmage. Let's identify the Mike, identify the blitzer. But then it looks like we're going to get a blitz off the edge. Nope. Uh, safety is going to rotate late. We're back to a too high look. We got the deep shot covered on both sides, the middle of the field if needs be. Holds the ball, steps up, pressure gets there in complete so you're going to get a whole lot of situations where mike zimmer is disguising his look or and getting back to a too high or he'll give you a similar look double a gap here against the steelers but he keeps it here this is going to stay in a cover one and instead of the safety maybe rotating back we're going to get pressure and we're going to peel off just a little bit here so that we can take away these hot routes and that's going to be i believe harrison smith taking away the hot right here Ill, Ill uh, advised throw incomplete. Let's take a look at it from the other angle from a pressure standpoint. This is kind of old school uh, cross dog type situation here at the front. When, when I talk about games, I'm fine from time to time doing some ET stunts. Like, I, I you know, sometimes these things are cool. But this is very simple stunt here with your middle linebacker. And what it allows you to do is get a free, or I shouldn't say free, you get a one-on-one -on -one with Barr on a running back. Now, just imagine that's Micah Parsons, right? The Neil Hunter's one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to get a cross here, loop around, and that makes sure that you get your one of your better pass rushing uh, linebackers one-on-one -on -one against a damn line, uh, running back. I really do not care who the running back is. That's a mismatch. Ill-advised throw, incomplete. And in this last clip, this is 100% a classic Zimmer pressure design. Once again, double A gap look. We got the quarterback running back. Hey, man, you got this guy. You got that guy. Center communication. Let's set this protection. If 54 comes, you got him. 55 is a mic. 54 is a mic. Let's get this set. Whole time. Keep an eye on this man. Harrison Smith. And this is this is the kind of the nuances I like about Zimmer's defense. Harrison doesn't show his hand. He waits till they get back. Pressure set. The play clock is down. 
they cannot reset the the pressure scheme i'm sorry the pr protection is set they can't reset it now so you got i believe aaron jones or whoever that running back is dealing with the linebacker but guess what he doesn't blitz <laughs> so he steps in the running back his duty is okay if nobody blitzes i go out and get ready for a dump off but guess what harrison smith gets a free rush let me get a hit on the quarterback these are the kind of plays that designs and pressure designs that zim can draw up that i think are clever i think are interesting and and he can make it all look from the same exact look you saw a two high you saw a cover one you see some uh cover six behind it you see combo coverages if you're if you're an xo nerd this should fire you up because we didn't see a lot of these disguises under mike i'm sorry under dan quinn in this last season well you could say well skies personnel i mean that that fair enough you could say that uh but i do know wherever mike has been he's shown the ability to do these things real quick let's jump into the phone lines uh talk to 972 what's good 972 Uh -oh. Hello. Yep, you live. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, great show as always, man. I tell you, just let me tell you a couple of things. So uh, when I first heard you with with Votch, you know, I heard I heard you on Votch, but then hearing you on this uh, show, man, you get in tremendous detail. I oh, mean, almost you, to the point where I think we all learn stuff. I thought I knew football, man, but listening to you, it's like my <laughs> gosh, man. I mean, and, during the season. Thank you, man. I'm still I mean, learning myself. So, you know, I'm, I'm I'm always wanting to 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 learn more about this game. Especially after the San Francisco game, when you broke down some of the stuff that was happening, and you said that they weren't, you know, and and then as it progressed, and you could see the change and how y'all picked up, and and you and Akoye basically just called out some of the stuff that Dallas wasn't doing that they started doing, and then guess what? They started winning, you know, based on some of the stuff that y'all saw on tape, which was really impressive. Um, just a few observations. I don't think I don't know if people knew from the Super Bowl is that like the, the, the 49ers were so close. There were two occasions on special teams. The first one being on the 57-yard field goal. I went back and looked at the tape. I didn't realize this, but that kick was almost blocked. I don't know if you saw it, but there were two people converging because you know the longer the field goal has to be, you know, the lower the trajectory the ball has to be to travel. And I swear to God, and, and, and it was confirmed by an analyst, he talked about it, where these guys, and I saw it, where these guys jumped, and within inches, they had they were going to block that kick. And I think if, if that kick had been blocked, instead of being 10 to 3, or, or 10 to 6, it would be 10 to 3 with them having the ball, and then it, they go up two scores, and maybe it's a different game. Second thing is on the punt that basically um, – where uh, the ball hit off the San Francisco uh, player and then KC recovered, mm -hmm. that the reason that ball hit the way it did was because the punter had to actually the, – the, the, the punt was going to be blocked. But the punter did amazingly moved over and, and changed the trajectory of the kick to where it wasn't blocked, but it was kind of – he kind of shanked it. And the fact that he shanked it made it drop the way it did and absolutely you know hit mm. that player, and then they recover. And then um, the other thing is that uh, I don't believe that KC scored – well, KC did not score a touchdown the second half in Baltimore. Right. And they didn't score a, a, a touchdown the first half against San Fran. So almost a game they went without scoring a touchdown. And yeah. I think that was a key play because then after that, Andy Reid had a perfect play you know, to score a touchdown right after that. And to, so, to, to boot, man, they missed an extra point, if I'm not mistaken, too, right? D didn't uh, Moody miss an extra point that that could have been? Yeah, made, it was blocked. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, the blocked extra point. So that could have been a, a four point game for, you know, the, the a four point lead, I say, for the Niners. Instead, it was three points. So now at the end of the game, you know, pack and drive down the field and just tie it as opposed to having to score a touchdown. So, I mean, just, just a lot mm -hmm. of little things. And shouts out to, to Spags. Spags spoke about. Uh, making an adjustment. He said in that first half, and this is, again, if you're a Cowboy fan, we're talking about adjustments. In that first half, he was like, hey, Purdy was 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 tearing up our zone low-key. Like, he was just moving the ball. And if you mm -hmm. remember, Niners were moving the rock. They just turned the ball over or couldn't punch it in. Yeah. And he said in the second half, I said, screw it. We can't do that anymore. So I knew I was going to put pressure on my all-pro, pro-bowl type, type corners. 
and he started bringing more man coverages, sending more pressure to Purdy, and it, it definitely changed the complexion of the game, and things became a little bit more difficult for Brock. But he still played well for a second-year player, but you saw the inexperience oh, yeah. when it came to identifying the pressures, and we just talked about how Mike Zimmer can show different disguises. Spags was doing that, and it was tough for the, for the Niners' uh, protection to pick it up. Yeah, I liked how the secondary basically said it wasn't really a rip on Purdy, but they said that our goal was to have him pass the ball. Of course. Because right? I tell you, because yeah. cause CMC was killing them. Mm-hmm. And some people think that it was uh, it was uh, uh, Shanahan's ego that he wanted to basically think about it. He wanted to take, you know, a quarterback that, you know, was the uh, last pick of the draft and try to get him to win a Super Bowl. And he was going to do it by passing. I mean, not to that level, but I mean, I mean, you have to really wonder why he had so few carries on those three straight three and out drives that were crucial, that were key, especially after Mahomes threw a threw just a terrible interception, and they were three and out. Yeah, I would have said I mean, the defense, Christian McCaffrey man, right there. I mean, the defense was incredible, and if if he runs the ball, and, and I go back to the Super Bowl, man. When uh, you know when Dan Quinn had a twenty-eight to three lead, they're on the twenty-two yard line. All they have to do is kick a freaking field goal, and they win the game. And instead, they get caught up with passing, and they get a penalty, they get a holding, and um, and just snowballs. And yeah. it's like you just really wonder about Shanahan's ability. Now, he's getting a lot of flack for the overtime rules thing. I think that's far. That that's just far fetched. I mean. I, you know, basically being, you know, not knowing if you're, you know, because when he first, when he first, you know, told CBS that we didn't want him to get the ball, that basically implied that they were going to win the game if they scored, which is not true. But I, I mean, you know, it, it really, you well, have to look at their defense too. You know, you have to look at, I mean, Mahomes just went up and down on them, and you have to wonder if they retired. I mean, there, there are different ways to look at it. What, what is your thought on that? I would say that is definitely a, a no-no. I, I, you know, he deserves a criticism for not knowing yeah. the rules or at least, you know, having his, you know, his team aware of the rules. I'm pretty sure he knew the rules, but he, he clearly didn't uh, relay it to his team. Um, be, because, look, this is the biggest game of the, the year. This is for the Lombardi. You need you you yeah. need to relay that stuff to your team. You heard the Chiefs. The Chiefs were practicing it every week throughout the playoffs, and he said they doubled mm-hmm. down on it for the Super Bowl. So there's a video yeah. going around, I think yesterday, where uh, they zoomed in on Patrick Mahomes, and they were like, it, when they said, "Hey, you know, coin toss won by the Niners. What do you guys want to do?" And the Niners said, "Receive." And Patrick was like, "Oh, really? Okay." <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and I agree with 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 you have to defer because you're going to get the ball in general. So if you hold them to a field goal, you know all I need is a field goal to tie or a touchdown to win. If they score, you know I need a touchdown to tie or I can score and go for two and end it. So I think in, with these new rules in the Super Bowl, I'm definitely deferring yeah. every time. Well, I mean, if you think about it, because they did run they, – they, they came across a fourth and one. I tell you, the other thing is that they had tr- awful spots on the ball. There were two or three times that Casey had a first down, and they called him short. And there were a couple of times where Casey could have challenged, but they didn't. And then, of course, yeah. in the overtime, you know, Those they can't challenge. <laughs> but I, I mean, one. especially that fourth and one, that the guy that was clearly a first, down, a first but down. They called yeah. it fourth and one. Yeah. And but they called it fourth and one. And in reality, if they had the ball, you wonder. I don't think they go for it. I think they punt it, and then they try to hold him and get the ball back because. You know, they're not going to go on fourth and one, you know, on their own, you know, 30, 40 yard line. So, yeah, you have to consider that. But then on the same sense, man, do you really want to give the ball to Patrick Mahomes? You have to think about it. Think not about last. What, what happened with it. Not, yeah. Not I, I mean, last, think about bro. what he did. Not last, but, but think that, but that's it. Well, I know, but see, you don't think about that. You're like, man, I don't want this guy to see the ball. You think about what he did with 13 seconds against the Bills. Right, I but, mean, all that has to be etched in their brain. But in, but in closing on this, the the problem is with the overtime rules, he's going to see the ball regardless. Re- right. re- regardless, he's getting the ball. So I'd rather him get the ball first so I know what I have to do in retaliation. Yeah. Hey, man, you, man. Appreciate Great the show, call. buddy. Question, are, are you a 49ers fan or a Chiefs fan? No, dude, I'm a Cowboys fan. But let me tell wow. you something. When the Cowboys lost – 
I was so disheartened. And I was like, man. And then I kind of like KC, but I'm like, you know what? That, K- KC reminds me of the Bulls. And I, I swear to God, that, that last drive, think about it. That last drive, Mahomes was 8 for 8 and had 27 yards rushing. I Did see. you know that had never that had never happened in the history of playoffs or regular season on a drive, that a player was 8 for 8 and had 27 yards rushing on a drive? Wow, what a nugget. That? And, and so when I saw that, that remind you know what, I got chills. That basically gave me uh, memories of Game 6, 1998, Finals, Michael Jordan, Utah, in Utah, shooting the last shot for the sixth championship. You got a sports and, encyclopedia brain, man. Oh man, dude! I tell you, I that that gave me, and I'm like, and then Bob Costas made this incredible. Said, Will this be the last shot that you know Michael Jordan? You know, and of course it wasn't because he came no. on to you know play for the Wizards, which was awful. But indeed, man. but I mean that shot, and for what he did to steal the ball from Carl Malone. With, I mean, just and then the whole crowd. I remember because I watched it, I replayed it. The crowd knows what's going to happen. Oh, Larry, they dude. know that and dribbling the ball down. I mean, he waited. I mean, because the time was going down and down, and then, and then, and incidentally, the guy he played, the the guy who covered him, <laughs> um, basically had a few years a few years previously had joked about him not being the same player when he took off for baseball. And and said that oh you know you you still don't have your you know I forget I forget the guy's name but he said yeah. you, you still don't have you know your whatever and he had it in the back of his mind and 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 this is what I hate though Isaiah Thomas said that he pushed off he didn't push off he was so quick he 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 ran and then he just he was able to stop and that was the um, weakness of the guy guarding him. The, the guy guarding him could not run and stop, and he knew that. Sir, I have to he applaud his, you his... For, for your details. That that you have amazing details of of these plays, man. But I appreciate the call. Fantastic stuff. Thanks, buddy. Yes, sir. Thanks, man. Ah, uh, nine seven two, man. Hey, hey, hey! I thought he was a Niners fan or Chiefs. Very detailed memory. Of, of, of things here i i would love off air to talk ball with you and stuff like that um because you probably got you know you probably remember something from 1976 1985 that that that, that nugget that he dropped eight for eight 27 yards interesting so it's only right i bring marvin here now i mean hey, it's... magic up, city man? what you got bro <laughs> i was listening to your boy he was worse than me <laughs> Hey, no, I'm on the phone like that. Hey, when Marv that come in, hey, if Marv come in here and say, "Hey, nah, hey, he worse than me," then then you know something up. Nah, he he <laughs> uh, yeah, he he more de- he a little more detailed than you, but yeah, you you know y'all y'all two peas in the pod though. Yeah, man, but he know his stuff. Got to get they credit. do, he do. Yeah, but I like how you had a uh, breakdown, man. That's beautiful. The shit show, uh, big game, James. Cause he's still crying about the defensive coordinator, and that's why I wanted somebody. See, they don't understand a Zimmer. Zimmer played a real good defense. He'll psych you, man. He yeah. make them quarterbacks <clears throat> in them uh, Shanahan offense hold that ball longer. Now Parson can get his sacks, or somebody else, or a linebacker, or a safety. He don't know who's coming, and that's how he play defense. And he wants your players to be in the right place. Like how you was breaking it down, don't get out of position on the run. That's what the Cowboys defense, because they couldn't get to the run, so they panic and they all out of position. And you got the the running back from uh, Green Bay looking like Tony Dorsett. <laughs> so now we just gotta get them big boys in them, get them big boys in the middle, get us some linebackers. You already got the safeties and corners, and we on. I agree. I agree with that. I think I think a lot of people was put off by the by the safeties, but I think he's going to do good stuff here with these guys, man. Dono, uh, real quick, if y'all did, if y'all missed my tweet um, the other day, <clears throat> was just talking about blitzing Harrison Smith. I think he he does very similar things as uh, Spags. Now the difference is Spags will blitz his his corners a lot, where Zim will blitz these safeties. But under Zim from 2018 to 2021. 
Harrison Smith blitzed 135 times. And we talked about Dono last year. He only blitzed 17, which was down from his 30 in 2022. When he did blitz that many times, 30 times, which is up there, like a top five-ish number for safeties, he led the league at the position in quarterback hits and sacks. So I think when he watches this tape, he's going to take a look at Donovan Wilson and say, oh, I can do some things with him moving forward. And if you go watch 2020, Donovan Wilson was doing the same things. When he was blitzing, he was he was causing chaos. He had like eight and a half sacks over that, that two-year span when they blitzed him like that. I know. Come on, man. We ain't getting none of that. Because damn, damn, my man sabotaged, sabotaged our team because he wanted a job. And like I said, he got the two big big tackles for the Redskins, so he's good. We never had that, y'all. So don't think uh, – He's going to be solid. I can see Dorn. I can see Dorn because they got 80 million to spend. I can see D. Armstrong and uh, your boy go there. That will be interesting, Mark, because mm-hmm. they got basket. So they got a combination of like these basketball guys and uh, a San Francisco 49er uh, general manager, assistant general manager. So I could definitely see Washington spending bread. Um, and, they go, and they might steal that corner, number 38. They got the money to pay. Sneed from the Chiefs? <laughs> yeah, they need a lot, man. They, they 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 should probably go out there and get some rushers too, because they they done gave away their two best ones. So they, they they need some some rushers, probably some. Shouts out to my guy Authentic. I saw it. There you go, right there. Authentic in the building. Uh, the beard's a Washington fan. He and, and, and Authentic, you know, he probably studies Washington more than I do. But I'd imagine they need some backers. They definitely need some rushers. Uh, I think Kendall look, Fuller look. is is a free agent, so they might need corners. They need a lot, bro. Yeah, and look, look, what would you just say, linebacker? Cowboys want the number six from Baltimore. I can see him getting picked up by the Redskins. So I'm I'm weird. I'm torn on on Patrick Queen, Marv, and chat. I'm torn. Yeah, me too. I'm torn on Patrick Queen because, excuse me, he needed he needed a guy like um, who's the cat that went over there from the Bears, Roquan Smith. He needed a guy yeah. like Roquan Smith to really unlock who he is, and we don't have a Roquan Smith. So unless they pairing him with somebody in the middle. Then, then sure. But if you're saying, hey, Patrick Queen's our guy, eh, I don't know, man. And, and I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm just saying maybe he's a complimentary player. Yeah. So they got the two big guys. Well, they got three big D tackles. And uh, they sat there. They just need to get the, the uh, D ends and a linebacker and probably another corner. But the Cowboys is close, y'all. Like I say, Zimmer, well, Zimmer. We're going to have a top five defense. You finally going to have a good run defense, which we've been crying for for the last how many years still? Oh, my God. <laughs> or six or seven years, all the run defense is horrible. We can hey, get to the rush. Think, I, I think, now I think about it. Hold on, y'all. The Cowboys probably haven't been respectable on the ground since Zimmer left. Thank you. Beautiful, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm trying yeah. to think. Now I know there's been there's been years where Rob Marinelli's defenses look. Hey, we ranked top five, but I think that was because Tony and the offense were so good that teams had to yeah. throw the ball. And you played. Remember that ball control keep away. We played yeah. that. Yeah. You know, we we played that UNC old school four corners ball. We gonna we gonna run the ball. We're gonna hold the clock, to control time of possession, and, and give limited possession for other offense. So it looks like oh. Well, you're only giving up 85, 90 yards on the ground. Well, yeah, because you're only getting six possessions. And, and still, that was that's why I used to always get mad. Because in that 2007 NFC game, I was so mad. I say, man, my friend said, man, what you worried about more against the Giants, the 9 or 7 Giants? I said, man, I don't feel comfortable. I said, we got to have a lead. If we don't get no lead, and they get the lead, we're in trouble. And look what happened. We lost 21-17. We, yeah, score, we score only three points in the second half. But uh, our defense is going to be st- – just a big game, James. I hope you listen. <laughs> big game, James. Please stop panicking, man. Hey, we got beat. I, we I, went 12 or 5 three times still, and we choked. We did. And that's yeah. why that's why fans are, you know, 
rightfully so frustrated and don't believe you. So you just got to understand that, Mark. Once you understand that fans are going to be frustrated and not believe in things like that, I think it's easier to accept. You can't be mad at them for that. I always been frustrated, but still, I always been. You know me, still. I'm a defensive guy. Once you get that defense to help this quarterback, because he ain't no ain't the quarterback from Kansas City. Y'all need a good defense. Now, like I said, still, in remember closing, I said, in closing, now, yeah. in closing, if we lose thirteen to ten or twelve to ten or ten nine, then y'all y'all cuss me out and cuss a uh, Dak Prescott. Out. That's our quarterback. We gotta go for him. If we change and go backwards, y'all rather be five and eleven, five and eleven, five and eleven. Then y'all really gonna quit. So get me in the playoffs so I can get a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Salute to your show, bro. Appreciate yeah. you, big dog. Let's jump back into uh, this this uh, Mike Zimmer presser here, y'all. Uh, just curious about your thoughts on Al Harris and kind of, you know, as you're putting the staff together, how he kind of fits in. Yeah, um, I had a good visit with Al and the rest, the rest of the coaches here. And, um, you know, he's, you know, it's up to Obviously, Mike has made the decision that, you know, these guys are going to be here. And so we had a good conversation that um, uh, that. that he's going to still be here with us. And, you know, he's, you know, it's up to Obviously, Mike has made the decision that, you know, these guys are going to be here. And so we had a good conversation that um, uh, mm. that he's going to still be here with us. And uh, I'm excited to work with him. And, you know, I've heard a lot of great things about uh, the work that he does and, and uh, really all the guys here. Should I get him? Yeah. Should I get him? Yeah. It's up to who? Nah, I'm not gonna be, not gonna be messy, y'all. I'm not gonna be messy. I'm not gonna. Be... <laughs> you hit him with the. Oh, well, obviously, it's up to. Up to you, right? You. It's up to Mike. But nonetheless, Al Harris is a good cornerbacks coach, so I don't. I, that's fine. If if Mike over if overrules you there, that's cool, you know, because because Al Harris has worked with these DBs. He's worked. He's got the best out of Deron Bland. He's got the best out of uh, Trey Diggs. I just hope he wanted them too. That's all I'm saying. I ain't gonna be too messy. I'm gonna just leave it at that, y'all. I'll keep it moving. Garrett. Garrett Cordell, CBS Sports. Mike, you came up as a defensive backs position coach. What are your thoughts on coaching Deron Bland coming off his historic year and Trayvon Diggs coming off his ACL injury? Yeah, and that's my problem right there. Uh, uh, who said it in the chat about 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 McCurley? Where'd you go, DA Lee? See that that that's why I brought it up low key. Because if Mike said we keep an owl, what if Mike said we keep an Scott McCurley? Come on. Well, I'm always excited to coach with, with good players and and uh, good defensive backs. You know, it's kind of was my, as you said, my baby coming up. Um, you know, I, I love the technical aspect of that position. Um, I know you guys over here 18 years ago when I was, you probably saw some some of that stuff when I was here. But uh, you know, footwork, technique, uh, hand placement. Um, you know, getting out of the break, shoulder shoulder level, you know, all those things. And so, um, you know, those two guys, obviously I've never worked with them, so I don't know. I've only seen them on tape. But, um, you know, hopefully uh, we can continue to, get, continue to get them better. I know, you know, obviously I've, I've watched some of those guys on tape. Yeah. You know, so, and as far as the second question, um, you know, there's a reputation out there that I'm, a jerk or something like that, which hey, and it is what it is, I guess. But, um, but you know, since I since I since it was announced that I was going to be here, I've heard from so many players that played for me, uh, uh, players here, not just defensive backs, but linebackers and defensive linemen, uh, texted me and said how happy they are for me. And I think if I was such a jerk, I wouldn't be hearing from those guys. Brad Sham, Cowboys Radio, Zim. Uh, the... Hey, Zim said, look, man, I, I hear y'all talking about me. First of all, you ain't rap long enough, okay? I've been around. My, my, my resume is long, and I've got tons of former players that respect me. And I think it was, um, and this is this is true, uh, but I think it was Foots who said something along the lines of, you usually remember the, the teachers who are harder on you, and that is so damn true. 
I I used to reach out to my basketball coach after everything was over it uh, in high school and say, "Hey man, I appreciate you for the things that you you taught me." And you because I use that now. I teach some of that to my sons. You know, the whole show me your friends, I show you your future. I I know there was times where we were in tears at practice from the things we had to do. But it it, it came from a good place. So, I'm all for Mike Zimmer, you know, <laughs> doing what he got to do to get through these players. And Mike McCarthy said something along the lines of, which is interesting that he said it, but he was like, hey, I'd rather be respected before love than let the love come later. I agree, Mike, but we know you a player's coach, though. So, well, you know, we don't, we don't need you. And then Mike, Mike kicked him, or Mike Zimmer, that is. Mike kicked him and was like, oh, yeah, man, you was spitting right there. That's all. I wasn't telling you, you know, keep talking. I was saying you was spitting. And I agree 100% because that's how Mike Zimmer is naturally. That is who he is. He ain't trying to be loved right now. You'll love me later once you realize that what I'm doing right now is going to make you better. And that's all I care about as a coach. Let's keep moving. Let's go back to even when you first went to Minnesota. The young men coming into the league as players, how have they? How are they different, the kids who come into the league now compared to back then? Um, you know, I think, Brad, the biggest thing is um, – the ones that want to be great, they want to be coached. You know, they, they want to be coached. Now, you know, there there's a lot more social media. There's a lot more of the uh, outside stuff going on. But, you know, the ones that I w I've been around, the young guys, the ones that want to be great, they want to be coached. They want to study. They want to, they want to understand, you know, how they can get better. And to me, that's what the, most all the great players, they want to know how can you make me better. And, um, you know, so I, I think uh, – you know, and y'all had Anthony Barr here. I love Anthony Barr. Um, you know, he was a little hurt when he, you know, playing here. But, you know, he was a young guy, and he was terrific, great leader, studied, did all the things. And, um, you know, so we had a lot of guys like that that, that uh, come in there. Now, I coached the Polynesian Bowl high school all-star game a couple weeks ago, and uh, – now those guys were dancing between plays, and mm -hmm. they had the they had the, uh, um, the attention span of about two seconds. But um, you know, I I think great players Dang. want to be great. I agree. <laughs> Me and Vox, we got something special set up for y'all from that one. But I but I agree with with Zim right here, man. Um, the Polynesian Bowl was crazy though. Talking about how the high school kid Zim, they kids. That just goes to show you, Zim ain't going to be for all of the nonsense on the sidelines and all of that good stuff. Yes, have fun. You need to have fun in this game, no doubt about it, right? But we, we saw it. We, 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 we saw what Zim is like on the damn sideline. Damn it, that's horseshit. If we get a press, G, you get your f***ing ass outside and get it contained, okay? I told you this quarterback runs. Keep him in the f***ing pocket. You got me? You better quit bullshitting around. I'm not having this bullshit. Better get your minds right, or I'll get them right for you. Damn it. He goes on, and, and we'll probably get to it here in a second. He does go on to explain that that is who he is, but he understands kind of like what Jimmy said. There's certain players uh, you are the way you are with, and, and then there's certain players you have to, to move maneuver around with. But I hope Zim remains who he is. And the fact that he's been a head coach, he understands how to connect with each individual, and then you move on from there. Um, but I, I, I am all the way in on respect me first, love me later. And I think that'll get the best out of a lot of these guys. And it, it is new. It is a new age, right? But you look at somebody like Trayvon Diggs. Dude, coached under or played under Nick Saban. You know, I, I'm not worried about that. And I talked about this, was it last week or two weeks ago, where uh, one of the Super Chats was, hey, will Micah be receptive to this? I said, Micah's a great player, and great players want to be coached like this. He even brought that up before in training camp. So I don't worry about them, right? Wanye Thomas also brought up, hey, I want to be coached hard. I feel like his style was going to weed out some of the bottom feeders, some of the low end of the roster, and rightfully so, because those guys are going to be needed to be used and relied upon from time to time because, you know, the league, you need the depth. And if they not up to the task, I, let me tell you this right now. A guy like J-Ron, I think, would have been benched. I think J-Ron would have been benched this year under Mike Zimmer. You could see it on film where it was just, 
I wasn't for it no more. I really wa- I didn't want to smoke. Somebody made a very funny ass comment last week where they was like, J. Ron was becoming known for pointing fingers at a dude who made a play. He wasn't making them though. Like J. Ron wasn't making them, but I point my yeah, Micah, yeah, DB. Now you gonna make a play? So it's those type of dudes that that I worry about, not the great players. I feel like those guys want to be great, and those guys will will take into this type of coaching because he's going to get the best out of them. Go look at his resume. Daniil Hunter, Geno Atkins, a ton of cornerbacks, safeties. Not all of those dudes were great players, but there were some great. Kendricks, Barr, you know. People forget he had Linvel Joseph and Michael Pierce up under him, and, and those two dudes were fantastic in Minnesota. So, I, I, again, I'm going to keep saying it like a broken record, but I think Zim is going to be good for this defense. Oh, here we not go. be someone who is your friend is to get the best out of you. How, how would you describe your coaching style? Has it evolved at all over the years, or are you still the same guy you've been your entire career? Well, I think these guys that have been here saw me 18 years ago, they've evolved. Otherwise, they wouldn't be sitting there. And I think I've evolved, too, or otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here. But, um, you know, I, I'm demanding. I try, I try to get the best out of the players. But, you know, to me, there's a difference. You know, I had one player who was a, a terrific player, and you could not yell at him. You had to put your arm around him. You had to talk to him, whisper. He didn't like to be reprimanded in front of people. And so that's what I did with him, and he became a, a terrific player. Other players, you know, I'd get after, and, you know, I'd, you probably know some of the game, names. He, one of them was here. Um, but uh, like, I'll say it to him, Pac-Man Jones, right? He he gives me the biggest hugs now when I see him. But I, uh, you know, you know we ha- we've had our our issues, you know, going back and forth. And um, you know, uh, you know, I think everybody's different. You try to you try to hit the button, however it is is to make them better. Got it. I, I like how he called out Pac-Man Jones. You know, Zim is not scared to. <laughs> So you know what I say it? I want to smoke. But no, that's because he's respected. And Darren Woodson says something along the, along the lines uh, during Super Bowl week where, hey, look, me and Zim, we weren't friends during during my career in Dallas and him being there. But afterwards, we became friends because I respected how he coached me and he got the best out of me. And you hear him. He's going to bring up Xavier Rhodes. He brings up uh, Pac-Man Jones, Anthony Barr. Darren Woodson's a guy who brought him up. Marcus Spears brings him up. This, this isn't by mistake, man. And, and I think these guys will buy in. Uh, Kevin Sharrington, Dallas Morning News. Uh, you talked about how- this ain't Mike Nolan. I said that before, but this is this is nothing close to it. You evolved, obviously, as everybody else had. What has not changed about you since you were here last time? Competitiveness. Um, probably um, being technique-oriented, being fundamental, uh, disciplined. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that kind of Get me grouchy. <laughs> Edward or ESPN, if each of you could address the uh, when Dan Quinn was a defensive. One more time, because we need this. You know, uh, you know, I think everybody's different. You try to you try to hit the button, however it is is to make them better. Got it. Uh, Kevin Sharon, Dallas Morning News. Uh, you talked about how you evolved. Them. Obviously, as everybody else had. What has not changed about you since you were here last night? Competitiveness. Um, probably um, being technique-oriented, being fundamental, uh, disciplined. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that kind of get me grouchy. Technique, fundamental, discipline. Boy, he's not lying about not changing. Uh, if y'all remember this quote that I that I dropped and eventually dropped it on Twitter. Y'all, this is from when he first got hired in Minnesota. This bottom one here. But I want to be fundamentally sound in what we do. There are teams that can go out there and that can make a lot of big plays, but they're not fundamentally sound. Then when the game gets on the line, they do not perform in crucial situations of the game. Technique, discipline fundamentals these things are things that can bring out the best in average players and i think it's why you see a lot of his defenses everywhere he goes 
somebody made a good point about about Cincinnati. Cincinnati at that time, Cincinnati wasn't going out there and signing a bunch of big name free agents. At that time, Mike Brown was considered one of the cheapest uh, owners in 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 the NFL. But he got the best out of these guys. George Iloka had a career year over there. Crocker had a career years over there. Uh, and I, Geno Atkins and Michael Johnson and Carlos Dunlaps and not saying these guys are, are below average guys or average, but you get what I mean. They didn't they didn't have Aaron Donald up and down the up and down the roster. Same thing in Minnesota. I just showed you a bunch of plays where I talked about these players playing on a string. That's because they are sound. They're fun, they, they, they know their fundamentals, their, their, their assignments, their discipline. So you can take a group of maybe not all-stars and they can go out there and compete at a high level and at more often than not be a, a top-ish or elite defense. So just imagine what he can do with, with more talent, with, with elite players, with all pro type players, as long as you round out the rest of the roster around him and weed out those who want nothing to do with it, right? So music to my ears when I hear that from Zim, because he hasn't changed. That's a good thing, right? So sometimes, you know, he's away from the game for a few years. He, he sees how things are a bit different and he's like, you know what? I'll fall back from what I, what I, what I made my name on. No. Mike Nolan comes to mind. Uh, Mike Nolan did a whole bunch of different things throughout his career. That's why I said this is not Mike Nolan, man. If you really go and study Mike Nolan when he came to Dallas, he has he hadn't been a, a defensive coordinator for quite some time because he wasn't as good at doing it. And if you really listen to what people were saying about Mike and what Mike couldn't teach, um, Jim Tom Sula, same Jim, Jim Tom Sula and Mike Nolan, hard nosed guys. But here's the difference. If you just going to yell and scream at me because I'm not executing what you want me to do without teaching me how to do it, sitting me down, you've seen Zimmer do it, sitting me down, hey, I want the best from you. So when I'm getting on you, it's not because I'm just doing it for fun. I know that if I don't do this, you know, it makes me sad that I can't get the best out of you. This is a real conversation he had with one of his guys in Cincinnati. I don't want to see you get cut, but if you don't step it up, that's what's going to happen. Having these real life conversations with each other. It wasn't a case under Mike Nolan. Mike Nolan was a tyrant. And I think that's a different type of I wouldn't even consider that leadership, to be honest. Zim knows how to connect with these players and get the best out of them. Edward or ESPN, if each of you could address the, uh, when Dan Quinn was a defensive coordinator, obviously created a great emphasis on turnovers and defensive touchdowns, and you guys dominated that statistic across all three years. Does that approach continue here, or do you have to give up something there to be more sound and play, you know, defense against the run and so forth, areas which have been weakness in recent years? That's how big a point of this. Yeah, for you. Well, it's always a point of emphasis. And, I, you know, I, I do think, you know, if you look at turnovers, typically they come from um, quarterback hits, overthrows, you know, things like that where, you, where quarterbacks make the wrong reads. Um, you know, you, you knock the ball out of somebody's hands because you're physical. Um, I think all those things kind of incorporate all those things. And, you know, if it, you have, in, in my opinion, I've always felt like, you have to be fundamentally sound to get to the football in the right way, and then once you get there, then then now it's it's doing that, and then you know if you if you if you never hit the quarterback, you're not going to get turnover. So um, you know, obviously, we're always going to try and hit the quarterback. You know. Listen to that one more time. In in my opinion, I've always felt like you have to be fundamentally sound to get to the football in the right way. And then once you get there, then then now it's it's doing that. And then, you know, if you if you if you never hit the quarterback, you're not gonna get turnover. So um, you know, obviously we're always gonna try and hit the quarterback, you know. You mentioned how before before I move forward to again, man, he just keeps bringing it up and and and, and I don't know. Basic is nothing to really get excited about, but I watch a Niners defense. I watch a San Fran's defense, uh, uh, a Detroit, even though they're a very aggressive defense. Um, some Baltimore, these defenses are fundamentally sound. I, I didn't watch my team and come away with that. I just didn't. It felt very individual. It felt very reliant on one or two players to be spectacular. And a lot of times it worked against subpar teams, you know? So I'm not saying it was always bad, but like he said in that one quote, 
if you're not fundamentally sound, you can make big plays, but when it comes down to crunch time, can you stop them? I think this is I think this type of mentality is much needed. Uh Miss Jackie, she said, Hey, can we stop these penalties? Discipline. He brings up discipline. And I don't know if this is going to work throughout the whole team, but defensively, I highly doubt you're going to see the Cowboys have 16 or 20 or whatever it was offsides penalties. You can get that up out of here. That's not happening. But if you go look at historically in Minnesota, um, Mike Zimmer's teams routinely ranked in the bottom third in penalties routinely. So you can say, well, he's ruling by fear. Well, it's working. Right. But but he had a, uh, a quote where he talked about how, you know, we're, we play the right way. We, we play a way where we don't have to, you know, have penalties. And you see it. You see it in the numbers. He doesn't, they, they don't, they don't throw a lot of flags on Mike Zimmer's teams. Let's try to finish this thing up. All right, come back up. Here we go. Shouts out to Joe, by the way. These players have reached out to you. Were there some of those players who maybe had to mature a little bit before they understood what you did for them when they were players? And if so, what did they say they, they figured out or understood? Yeah, um, so I'll give you a good good example. Um, Xavier, Xavier um, Rhodes called me uh, probably five months ago. And, um, you know, I was on his rear end every day about being disciplined getting into the right footwork, all this stuff. He became a terrific player, you know, and uh, he called me and he just said, Coach, I know how hard you were on me, but I appreciate what you've done for, for me and the family and the things like that. And, I mean, you hear that, you know, uh, there's, a, you know, I probably was too hard on a lot of players, but, you know, I've heard it several times. And so, um, you know, I think that's um, – it makes you feel good that you know they understand that you're you're just trying to help them. You're not you're not just out to be a mean guy or something like that. So, what needs to be done in the months ahead to get this run defense to where you want it? It needs to be. And how would your philosophies guide that? Well, we got to get the staff together first, and then we got to go through the film. We got you know the. Pro <clears throat> I hate saying process all the time, but you know there's a process about getting all the. First off, we got to get all the coaches on the same page. We got to speak the same language so the players can speak the same language. So when they come off the field, they speak the same language to me, and you know because they say, "Oh, this guy did this or that guy did that," and I don't understand what they're saying. So we got to get the communication down first, the techniques down oh, down second. We got to make sure that we we figure out where the personnel is and put them in the right place and then let them and then get them coached up and let them go um you know it's it's too early you know i've been here a day and a half now so it's too early to know a lot of the things that we have to do but that's kind of the the routine that we're going to go through here I, I mean i mean great great point uh brother l where you say it is the basic or boring things that we should be excited about just something as simple as that right there where he talks about you know, getting the communication down, being on the same language from top to bottom. So when they're coming off the field, I'm not like, what the hell are you talking about? What are you what are you, what are you saying you're seeing out there? That's not what you're supposed to see you're supposed to be doing. And we showed the play and coverage where we talked about how key communication is. It's not a difficult scheme for our players. But if ran right and correctly, it can be difficult for the quarterbacks to deal with because of the, the way it can be disguised. Um, so... I love that he said, I love that he said, so when the players come up, now this could be practice, but I'm thinking about the game. When the players come off the field and they're talking to me, again, little, little things like that. See, when the players were coming off the field over the last three years, our guy was in the booth. You know? Our guy was in the booth. And, and that's how he operated. I'm not saying booth or field because because we were talking about how Kellen being in the booth would have been good because Kellen is a you know he, he's more of a guy I think that has to see it but Dan was is kind of that motivator right like I thought Dan was a motivator I feel like Dan being on the sideline would have been a good thing but when they come off the field they're not going to their defensive coordinator they, uh, they're not picking up the phone everybody can't pick up the phone so Zim like now nah, when y'all come off the field you talking to me I talked about that a lot when it came to like some of the, the breezes and the, and the um, who was it? Breeze and, and Peyton and Andy 
and Pat. I felt like head coach, quarterback have to have that. Come off the field. We talking what you're seeing, what's going on. Let's do it. Defensively, it all depends who you are. And Zim is clearly a guy that wants to be down there because he feels like y'all need to feel me during the game. And I respect that. Dan didn't. Dan was a guy who filled me during practice, but you, but during the game, I'm up in the booth detached. And uh, you know, when things got murky, there didn't seem to be there didn't seem to be anybody coaching wise to be able to rally the, rally the troops. So you won't have that with him, one way or other. He going he going to get on you, or he going to motivate you. All right, I promise we're wrapping it up now. I knew I wanted to be here. I knew they wanted me to be here. And, and you know, I was told by, oops, sorry. Somebody calling for a job. Um, <laughs> Steve Wilkes, maybe? No? Huh? <laughs> really, it, really, it really was. Well, yeah. yeah, it really was. Uh, <laughs> so, hold on, so. Hold on, um, hold on. <laughs> Did y'all, this is for a show. Hey, y'all, we not lying about Clarence Hill. Did you hear him? You probably ain't going to be able to catch it. Let me see if you guys can catch it, man. Sorry. Somebody calling for a job. Um, uh, it, really, it really was. Yeah, it really was. Uh, he said, was it Rex? What did he say? Not Chuck. <laughs> Clarence. <laughs> Come on. Come on, chill. So, so, um, but we knew we would get it. You know, I was told we were going to get this thing done anyway. So it wasn't, it wasn't any big. So, so when Chill said, was it Rex, right? I felt like it lifted, it, it lifted the uh, media. The media has, you know, they, 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 they really wanted to bring up Rex, but I think they were scared. And then old boy said, oh, since he said something, I'm going to say yeah. something. So when did you see Rex Ryan's comments? And did you, was there anything? I, to- I see a lot of Rex Ryan comments. <laughs> I see a lot of Rex, man. Forget Rex Ryan, man. There was also a point in in, in this uh, presser here, and that's the end of it, but I purposely left out the Christie scale. Y'all see the Christie scales? See, now I want to bring up the Christie scales because I ain't going to do it. But, uh... Did did, did Zim give it a little... The the twinkle in his eye? Did y'all see that? Oh, Christy Scales, CowboysRadio.com. And he was like, hey, Miss Parker. Say, Zim, you better chase him. Can't be doing that, bro. But uh, yeah, man, I, I, I enjoyed Mike Zimmer's presser. It, it wasn't flashy. He didn't say it's not going to be like on Tuesdays or Mondays whenever the defensive coordinators, all, all the coordinators come up. And you got uh, Dan Quinn, who is very good with his words. He can make, you know, you know, we, we really didn't come out, but this we're gonna take this film, we're gonna we're gonna study it, we're gonna kick ass and whoop ass, and we're gonna be warriors. Mike Zimmer ain't doing all of that. Mike Zimmer straight to it. He's like a look, I know he old. We make fun of him. He happens to have an Apple Watch, though. Interesting. But he is like that grandpa. I just gonna give it to you straight, and I appreciate that. What, what will the results look like? We don't know. But I do think this is one of those situations where going on the other end of the spectrum, but a more skilled person than the previous time that we've done this, I think is going to be good for this team. Y'all think I'm lying? Go look it up. Miss Christy said, Miss Christy Scales said, you know, Christy Scales, right? DasCowboys.com radio. Zim said, he was drinking. He said, "Hey, Christy, whoa, 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 relax, Zim. You're gonna be seeing a lot of Christy scales, man. You can't be doing that every single time." Shouts out to Christy scales. You said your pops got an Apple Watch, Mark. I don't even got an Apple Watch. I don't know what for. I, you know, my wife got one, and all I see is all these weird. I'm like, what you got? What is all this? To, to track your steps for what? I don't need that. You can call me old. I just don't need an Apple Watch. Uh, Banks, what's good, Banks? <laughs> Hold up! Oh, <laughs> man. Time out! Time out! Is lit authentic? I don't know, man. Dro said. Dro said. 
Zim is trying to Zam. Oh, yeah, damn, that's good. That's a good one, bro. Go ahead. My bad, Banks. <laughs> <laughs> Zim is trying good, to Zam. Man. It's crazy. <laughs> good morning to you, though, man. Good morning, but, uh, brother. Uh, yeah, man, um, man, he said a lot, but um, I'm going to just say, uh, yeah, man, I, I just want, I just think it's been a, it's been a while since we were just, as far as defense, that, you know, we were good at every, every level. Like, if the, if the run defense was good, the pass defense was suspect, you know, vice versa, you know, like it's been the past few years, you know, uh, the pass defense been, you know, pretty, you know, decent, and but the run defense been suspect. And, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, when Rod was there, you know, the, the run defense was good. You know what I mean? But, 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 you but, know, but, 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 but was players. it, though? That's what I was saying earlier, Banks. Like, was it really? You know what I mean? Maybe from time to time. But yeah. when you go look at it, we was playing that keep away a lot. So it was, I felt like it might have been fool's yeah. gold a little bit. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm still the same. Um, but, and also, I don't. We didn't have the talent that we got now, especially on the back end those years either. But uh, you know, it was kind of more so of a, I guess, pass funnel defense, so to say. If I got that right, you know, cause they knew they can pass on us, so they probably doing that more so the running ball. But uh, um, <clears throat> but uh, man, I just like to see us good, man. But uh, everything he said just being the fundamentals. Uh, being disciplined and everything, man. We need all that. But, uh, you know, and just the fact he put that out there of how to, you know, how to, he knows how to approach certain guys or how to coach certain guys. And when he said Pat Man, I, I won't surprise, man, because Pat Man, don't, oh, man he didn't seem like he wanted to be yelled at. Like, man, don't call me out for everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, Pat Man uh, was, was, was a wild boy. I mean, he, he, red flags coming in, red flags with all his teams. I mean, yeah. 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 So, I'm not, you know, I won't, won't surprise by that. But um, you know, man, I'm just ready to see see what these positional coaches are gonna do, what they're gonna do. Uh, you know, as far as that. Um, but you know, just excited to see, man, and see. I think we need. I think he kind of offset what uh, McCarthy brings. You know, McCarthy kind of seems more so. You know, like him and Dan was kind of. Players coaches, where well, they were players coaches, you know what I mean? Yes. So the same, and yeah, and then I think he kind of he offsets that. I want to say I don't want to say softness, but that's kind of what it is. You know what I mean? Like that, you know, that buddy, buddy, like you know, he's he's okay. strict. You know what I mean? So I like that. You know, I like that part about it. And and uh, the last thing, man, I just um, I forgot what I was about to say, man, but uh. But on yeah, that, on that, real right quick, there. you you know who who was a better uh, comparison than than Nolan because that was obviously the last kind of hard nosed guy. Uh, the better comparison yeah. is Rob Marinelli. Rob, Rob yeah. Marinelli was a hard ass, but Rob Marinelli yeah. got you know, he was a good teacher as well. Now I don't think he's a better defensive coordinator historically than than uh, Zim. I think Zim is better, but they're very similar in in that sense that. They're going to be they're going to be hard on you, um, but if you yeah. if you buy into this process of what they're trying to teach you, you're going to be better for it. And they're more like I say likable. They're they're more likable in their process, I think, than than um, Tom Sula and Nolan were because again, they, this was more of a a tyrant type of situation as opposed to man, I'm I'm teaching you this to so you can be better. And if you can't get with the yeah. program, we'll move forward. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, oh yeah, that's all I was gonna say, man. Yeah, um, you spoke on spoke on how you know he's gonna be on the sideline versus how Dan Quinn was up in the booth, man. And uh, you know, not to rag on, I, I absolutely hated him being in the booth. I'm like, you know, it, if they did see Dan Quinn as you know, just kind of motivating that, but better warrant you out down down there with your players when when things are going south, you know, go down there and be that motivator. You know, most of the time we seen somebody talking to guys, it was which is mainly the secondary, it was Al Harris. But who in the other guys' face getting them going? You know, who who's bringing yeah. the defense together? Because when everything was going bad, it's just they sitting on the sideline, man, and just like, you know, blah, like, damn, like, we're getting the, wrong, we're getting the ball ran down our throat. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Like, who's pulling everybody together and getting in the ass 
and tell them, you know, just blah, 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 whatever, whatever. You know, you know, I don't think it was anybody down there like that. You know, at least not that we could see from, you know, our standpoint. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think so, eight and dirt eight. I think, I think they all went to their position coaches. Yeah, yeah, true. Oh, yeah, yeah, dirty. I forgot about dirty. Yeah, but you know, but was it? You know, I guess kind of that fire coming off with that fire. Hey, get your act together. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, all you know, you having all these neutral zone infractions because you just, you know, and all sides and stuff because you're not looking down the line and seeing where you at. You know where the ball is, the line of scrimmage is, so you can be on side. Nah, one hundred percent, man. You still there? But, uh, yeah, that's all I want to say. All right, man. Appreciate you, Banks. All right, sir. Yo, either I'm tripping or dot com deleted the Christy Scales question. Because I don't see it. Mm. I was going to bring it up. Interesting. Can't find it. Patrick Yessie Walker. He, he get a little bit of pat. He do got a little bit of pat at him. Uh, let's get to these super chats, man. Appreciate y'all for being uh coming through today. This was a this something different. I don't normally do these type of reaction type of videos. Um, y'all know how how I do here. But off season, we're in a weird period. Zim got the presser. I thought he said some interesting things, and I kind of wanted to combine his presser with some of the film, more film that I'm coming across on Mike Zimmer. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that part. If you missed it, <clears throat> excuse me. If you missed it, run it back. We talked about pretty much some of the same things we discussed under Zim from a film standpoint before. We uh the disguises he likes to do, the double A gap mugs, but a little bit more run defensive film. Um because I think that's going to be a huge key for the Cowboys moving forward is being able to lean on the defense. I know this is going to sound crazy because of top 5 defense, right? Um not at the back half of the year. All these turnovers, wonderful. Uh, he scored a bunch of points. It all was, it was all good just a week ago, right? Uh, in the first half of the season or whatever. But there was still something fundamentally not sound about the defense, and you you couldn't really ignore it. And you heard CD and Micah talk about it. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Push it off. Figure it out. Never got figured out. And I think they just were assuming, oh well, we got Micah, we got uh, DB and Gilly and 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 Hank up front. Osa, D Law, we'll be fine. Nah, man, you need to be fundamentally sound. So we took a look at some of their run defense, where they were, and how they move. I promise you, go look at how they move and go look at how we move. Not the same. Super chat. All right, we are at the 15th. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful Valentine's Day with your significant other. Tavis, uh... He said, I uh, dropped 10 and he said, discipline was the main word of all facts. Discipline and fundamentals. I agree. I agree. Keystone, by the way. Uh, said, discipline was the main word of it all. That's what I took away. Night 405. Super chat. Dropped two and said, how much draft input did Zimmer have in the past? Well, night, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you that without doing like a super, super deep dive. Uh, asking some people that are close to Zim. I'd imagine, though, uh, as a head coach, I would hope some. I don't know the intricacies of the Minnesota Vikings front office like I do here, where we know um, there's, you know, the front office can meddle, but also around draft time, Jerry, per se, will definitely rely on 17 different voices. Um, this isn't cut and dry. Hey, this scouts, general manager, general manager picks it. That's not how it works here. Jerry, the general manager, Jerry don't know nothing about nothing trust and believe me jerry jones is not sitting in the room watching film so jerry jones is going to act like you know the general manager but he's like well, what do you think mike okay what do you think will what do you think dan what do you think chris what do you think steven and then they'll come together and collectively make a damn pick that's not how it works in, in, in these other organizations it's usually pretty cut and dry maybe two or three people but um it's different here. So how much input? I have no idea, but I'd imagine just about as many, as much as any non-general manager head coach, any non-Bill Belichick, Mike Holmgren types. My guess. Uh, Sydney dropped five. 
Super Chat. And said, bring Wilkes in now as defensive line coach. So if you guys missed uh, the roundup earlier, we actually talked about this. Bringing in Steve Wilkes, who was fired from the 49ers. Now, here's the thing, though, about, about Steve Wilkes. I don't recall him ever working with the defensive line. Um, not saying that you can't change his stripes or whatever. Uh, he was a defensive heck, you know, or a defensive coordinator. So I'd imagine he'd be able to, to work with guys, but this is a defensive backs guy by nature. Uh, that's, do we want to try to change the tiger stripes? I don't know. I, 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 I would have to know a little bit more about Wilkes and how close he was working with the linebackers, but you could argue, man, just get him in here. Just get him in house. Just get rid of Scott McCurley. But see, my what I would do, uh, if you're looking for a linebackers coach, go get me Paul Gunther. That's a guy who worked with backers. That's a guy who knows them. That's a guy who knows his scheme and knows what he wants to do with those those set linebackers. I'd personally like to bring in um, Spags. I'm sorry, Spags. I'd love to bring him back. I would like to bring in Wilkes to work with my DBs. Because that's what he does. That's what he has his black belt, as Vach would say, in. And specifically, I'd prefer him to be our pass game coordinator. Yep. I prefer him to be our pass game coordinator to take the role of Joe Witt. Joe Witt's responsibility was to come up with, you know, the pass game uh, plan, the pass game plan with the DBs. And because of his experience as a defensive coordinator over 20 some years in college pros and defensive back work. I think he could he could fill that role in well. Maybe you can say Al Harris could step up with it. That's fine and bring him in to, to do what Al Harris was doing. Uh, but but if I had to pick between the two of pass game coordinator, I'd go with Wilkes. Uh if I had, if you wanted to say, well, we'll just elevate Al to total control of the DBs, that's fine. Um I don't know how much ready Al Harris is to 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 do game plans per se like that. I don't know. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not going to fake it at all. We got one more that just jumped up in here. Appreciate your uppercut cannon. Super chat. Drop five and says, salute Sky. Do you think a true downfield safety might be sneaky need uh, this last next year? Who should we upgrade from Malik Izzy Wande? What do you mean by downfield safety? You mean like roof guy? I don't think safety is a need at all. I don't think it's even close. Um, I think you've, you've got a quality safety room that, let's be honest, low-key could be untapped. Yeah, I think this could be an untapped situation. Now, next you said, so this year, no. Next year, uh, technically, Juan, or technically Malik and Dono are on, they're here next year too, but you can get out of the contract if you want, so... I don't think it's a need as we stand right now. And, and again, go look at the history of Mike Zimmer and safeties. I mean, just in general, but he gets the best out of guys that you probably don't even know who the hell they are. Uh, and, and and that's not the case for Don and Malik. These guys are talented guys. So now I, I get a chance to say, hey, Malik, instead of playing 90% cover one and having to play sideline to sideline by yourself for m more than majority of the game, I can have you make a half field read. He's our smartest safety. Okay. Our most athletic safety, I think, is Wanya Thomas. Donovan Wilson is more of our kamikaze safety. And I think all of these guys, no matter where who wins, because like I said, roll out the pool stick, break it, and make the best man win. That's how I feel. I think they will be better because of Mike Zimmer. So I don't really see a need. I, me personally, I'm y'all know how I feel about Wanya. Um We'll see what's up with Izzy if he's moved back there. Bell, it could take some time to get him back to doing safety things, but even Bell was still there. And then you got Donald and you got Malik. I think you're set at safety. Um, you're, you're technically fine. Technically, I say technically, because you got Deron Bland and you got Diggs. But if you bring back Gilly, we're good there. <clears throat> Maybe you bring in a young guy in a draft some point in time. But I think your secondary has the potential to be in, in great shape for Mike Zimmer. It's the front seven where all the questions lie to me. Obviously, linebacker, bringing in bigger, stronger guys down the middle. And if you're moving Micah back, right, you're going to need to replace that. That that is a, There are two staples in the front seven for Mike Zimmer's defense. 
I need me a damn pass rusher, a demon pass rusher. Also need me a demon at linebacker too. So if they don't go out and, you know, we 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 did this the other day. Let me see if I got it up still. Sure do. We talked about some linebackers the other day. If they don't go out and sign two of them, and they say we're just gonna move Micah back and we'll put, then they're gonna need to address that. They're gonna need to address defensive end because you can't roll out Ghosting and and D Law and think that's gonna be your primary pass rush. I don't think you can do that. So lots of questions still to be answered. One more uh, toxic drop. Super chat. He said, "Money for the baby size, no jersey. Best wishes to you and your family." Well, this is A to Z money, but appreciate you, Toxic, uh, for the super chat. Good brother. I tell you right now, Ryan, no, I ain't coming back, though. He's not coming back. Tomorrow, we will be live from Hattie B's. We'll have Pat back on the show, um, and maybe we'll get some more news on Mike Zimmer's staff. Somebody called him, so I low-key want to wanna find out who. But I don't want to keep prying and pressing my guy. So I'll, I'll chill. So maybe we'll get some news later today and uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Before we get up out of here, though. Got to pay some bills, man. I told y'all cowboy season might be over. But that don't mean you got to stop going to BT Furnishings. We have closed the deal with Mike Zimmer. So go close some deals down at BT Furnishings. They provide inspiration to help you transform your home and represent the way you live. They believe style and affordability should be easy for everyone. That's why they have a wide selection of high quality furniture, accessories that come with lots of inspiration to connect with who you are. Are. If you're looking for quality furniture at an amazing price, stop into one of the locations in Arlington, Dallas, Garland, or Plano, or head to btfurnishings.com for every need in your home. BT Furnishings. They make shopping fun, fast, and easy. Do your boy a favor, man. With that said, push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. We up out of here. Thank you, brother. I will see y'all tomorrow live, remote. It's been a while. Hopefully everything goes well. Technically, I know how that gets. Either way, I'll catch y'all on the flippity flop. Shouts out to my guy, Michael Scott. Love y'all. We out of here.